do it all in too long. What are we doing today? Uh, what one seven. are we doing oh. today? I'm asking if the place is good. Uh, it is an easy one. There's no formula. Well, there's technically there's three, but I don't think so. But but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be able to remember. But it's not that complicated what we're about to do. All right, homework questions. Number number eighteen. What have you done all your homework? Well, then that's kind of what Good for you. That's kind there. of the point of the class. Yeah. Uh, 18. Find the volume. Correct the nearest cubic centimeters as a sphere inscribed in a cube with edges six. Uh, the key there is a cube. So if the edges are six, how far is it from the edge of a. I'm not in my room. You got a cube. It says the edges are six. That's the, not the corners, but from corner to corner is six. So how far is it from from the outside of the cube to the center? Three. Then that's got to be the radius of the sphere. Uh, B. Find the volume of the region inside the cube but outside the sphere. So that would just simply be cube minus sphere. So the cube would be six times six times six, and then whatever you get for the sphere, subtract that from. Thirty-six times six is calculator something. Uh, 36, six, six carry three. It's six, six cubes, so it's two hundred and sixteen. Yeah. Okay. So two sixteen minus four thirds pi, uh, three cubed it would be twenty seven. Uh, twenty seven is three cubed. Twenty seven times three goes into twenty seven. Nine nine times four is thirty six. Thirty six pi. So thirty six pi. That doesn't help because cube doesn't have a pi in it. Uh, thirty six is close to three. Three times thirty six eighteen nine one oh eight. So 216 minus 108, that's an approximation. So about 100, I'm looking at the answer in the book. What is it? 103. 103. Technically, it's 103.04, but. Very nice. Well done. The ice cream, I, just so you know, I'm going to steal that question. I didn't assign that last year. I'm going to steal that one and put it on the test, not for this year, but for next year. I like that question. That's a good question. Which one? Does the ice cream fit inside the cone if it melts? Oh, yeah, that one. That was cool. That was fun. No. Kind of, well, you just kind of calculate the area. Oh. Volume. Volume, yeah, that's what I did. All right, any other questions? All right, here we go. Uh, numbers one through eight was that um, table. table. So I'm going to call off, I think it's two answers per question. All right, number one, the area is 196 pi. Uh, the second one, the volume is ugly numbered, 1,372 pi over 3. Oh, okay. Uh, number two, area is 100 pi, and the volume is 500 pi over 3. Number three, the area is pi, and the volume is pi over 6. Uh, number four, uh, area is 9k squared pi over 4, and the volume is 9k cubed pi over 16. Uh, number five, the uh, radius is four. The volume is 256 pi over three. Number six, the radius is nine. The volume is 972 pi. Uh, number seven, the area is eight pi. The volume is eight pi root two over three. Number eight, the radius is six. The area is 144 pi. And then we come to the questions. Number nine is four and eight. Number 10 is 9 and 27. We, we were talking about that yesterday when we were doing the, the class. Number 11, 1 centimeter. 1 centimeter. Number 12, 36 pi meters squared. Number 13, 21 pi centimeters squared. Number 14 is 15 pi centimeters squared. Uh, number 15, uh, volume of a hemisphere is 4 times the volume of the sphere. If that makes sense. What if you did a ratio of one four? Yep. Okay. Yep. We already figured out 16. The answer was no. Number 17, we also did yesterday. It was 358 cubic or million cubic kilometers. No, square kilometers. We're doing surface area. Sorry. Number 18A is exactly, or not exactly, approximately 113 centimeters cubed, and B, uh, Ben said, was 103.04 cubic centimeters. What? Yeah. 
What? Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. 19, ugly number, 1,750 pi over 3 cubic meters. Mm, well, that's all right. Then I simplify. Number 20, no, we didn't do this one in class. I didn't do 20 in class. All right, it's eight cans. And it says approximately, so if it was over seven, you'd have to round up. So did you get seven point something or something like that? I got no, 4.5. I, I got that. I got it says about two cans of paint are needed to cover the hemispherical yeah, dome of the silo showed. Approximately how many cans of paint needed to paint the rest of the silo? Approximately two cans. Uh, so the, the issue is, is that you figure out the radius of the sphere which would be the radius of the cylinder. And then, oh, that's a complicated one. And then you have to do the uh, surface area of, the, of the, um, the cylinder, excluding, I assume, the top and the bottom of the cylinder because you wouldn't paint that. Uh, you paint the, oh, yeah, that's true. Hmm. Now, we already know the radius is five. Let's do this one just to make sure my assumptions are correct here. So the radius is five. Um, well, we have to, to do the sphere first. So four thirds pi r cubed, and it's a hemisphere, so it's going to be half of this. And we know the radius. What did I say? Five. Is it five? The radius. Wait, is this? Yeah, this is twenty, right? Yeah. Radius is five, I believe. Yes. Okay. So uh, that's what uh, one twenty five. One twenty five. Three go to one twenty five. Three eight. Nope. So one twenty five times four is. 600. 500? 500, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we get 500 pi over three cubic whatever, but we got to take half of that, so over six. Just, and then we can reduce that to 250 pi over three. And we're told that that is two cans worth of paint, is that right? Two cans? So yeah. it's about two cans of paint are needed to cover the hemispherical zone. Okay, so two, yeah, that's, that's, I got two. two yeah. cans for this, but then you're given that, you're given this. You're not given this number. You're, you're, it says two cans approximately can cover that much space. So then we can figure out what the surface area of the- uh, Of the cylinder, which would just be the lateral, lateral area. area. Yeah. And the lateral area is anybody? Is perimeter times, what is that? No, it's perimeter times height, right? Yeah, and that's circumference. Circumference times height. So that was- So it's two pi r times h, two pi r h. Two pi r h. All right, so two pi r h. Did I do this right? I did this wrong. I'm sorry. You don't want volume. We want surface area. Oh, that's true. Duh. Okay, all that work for nothing. All right, let's try that again. I was gonna say I did not get that. But... Let's try that again. Four pi r squared. Okay, now we're cooking. Four pi and the radius was five, so twenty five. So that's what hundred pi. So hundred pi. Oh, much nicer. Hundred pi covers two cans. So and, uh, the reason why is I was saying, well, this was so volume, and now say, I'm just doing area. So, say 50 pi is one so what was it? Pi R L? Is that right? Yeah. Two pi R L? No, it's just pi R L. No, it's two pi R L. It's pi R L. I promise you. Oh, it's two pi R L. I promise you, it's pi R L. Circumference, remember, is two pi R. Right, but it's one half because it's the. Yeah, that's what it says in my book. The lateral area of a circle is half the circumference of the base times the lateral area times the slant height. So it's one half times two pi R or pi R L. But it says in the book. Two pi r plus two pi r squared is the surface area of the cylinder, right? The lateral area of the cone equals half the circumference of the base times the slant height. Why is it half? Because the height is h. Why is it not two pi r l? What am I missing here? It's, it says it's pi r l. I believe you know, but why is it not two pi r? Where did the two cancel? It's, two had to cancel. It says somewhere. one half times two pi r l. Why it's is half it the half? circumference of the base times the slant height? So it says. Why is it half? Wait, no, 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 no. Never mind. Keep going. Is that the cone? It's a cone. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, it's got to be two pi r l or two pi r h, not l. H. There we go. Last was right. I just was using the wrong formula. Okay. All right. So uh, that's going to give okay. me two using l pi. Five. We're not using L. We're using H. Well, I mean, you used L earlier. So. I did, and that's why we were messed up. We're thinking cone. And the height is what? On this problem, is it ten? What? Twenty. 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 All right. So uh, ten, two hundred. So we're we got to cover two hundred pi. So basically, we need to. Oh, that's not right. 
Because that would be double. Yeah, I, I got four originally. I, I got, got four, four. Too. I got four. So as well. where is that? They must be counting the circles then. That can't be right. No, because the circles on the inside. That's what I'm saying. You wouldn't paint that. So if you sit, what? Interesting. Well, I'm pretty sure we're right. So, uh, oh, I, oh, 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 I know why. Because the bottom of the hemispherical, you wouldn't paint either. So you have to subtract the. Uh, uh we did fine because. You have to subtract two pounds. No. Yeah, because you're finding the. Yeah, but think about it. We got a sphere and you cut it in half. You're finding Hold the area on. of all of it. So that, that would be lower. That would be less you paint. You can't, can't use paint. the bottom of it. That'd be less. But, would, but no. no, we're still fine because the, the the surface area of a sphere would be the entire sphere. If you cut that in half, it would not include that circle base for the and hemisphere. And it's half, so it's two pi times. It's a hemisphere. Didn't I already take half? No, you just said four pi twenty five, so it's a hemisphere. I didn't take half, so it would be fifty pi. 50 so pi fifty is two. pi. It's two. It still doesn't give us. No, it does because it's fifty. Yeah, pi two. it's eight. It's eight. It gives us eight. That makes sense. Because 50 pi is 2. Because then 20. But that only goes four times. Yeah, that so mean, four that times mean, 2. That means. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, all right. That's a good problem. All right. All right. right. <laughs> Let's see if we all did 21 correctly. <laughs> well, it also is a B problem. So the cool thing is that we understood everything what to do, and we messed up so many times there on the execution of it. 21. Come on. Uh, six cans. Yes. Six. Okay. What did you get? I got eight. I don't know. I got six. All right. Since we messed that up, let's see if we can do one without making any mistakes this time. Myself included. All right. So it's uh it's a hemisphere with a circle on the bottom. I bet. Experimental one room house hemisphere with a floor. Three cans of paint are needed to cover the floor. How many will be needed to paint the ceiling? Ignore windows and doors. Just saying area versus the lateral. It's the same thing. It's 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 surface area. Well, the issue is that there's no numbers, right? Yeah, there is. There's numbers. Yeah, but there's no radius. Uh, an experimental one room house is hemisphere floor. It doesn't matter because we're just going to use the, the variable use R. The formulas. Yeah, we'll just use the, the variable R. So we know that the, the, the base would be pi R squared, and um, that equals how many cans? Three. Three. And then uh, the hemisphere, which would be how about we just do two pi r squared this time? So I'll already take half two pi r squared. Well, there's still the difference in fact that there's two. So you just double that. You so that would be expand. Yeah. okay. That that was even remotely challenging compared to twenty. Yes. And then twenty two is four hundred pi. Four hundred pi. I'm gonna put one of those next year. You better do number six, sixteen. Sixteen is a good one, and, and plus. It, you know, the, the thing about the painting thing is that unless you specifically state all the things and people might assume that, wait, does that include or not include? I left my clicker in the other room. Darn it. Oh, 20, 21st century problem. <laughs> I left my clicker in the other room. Yeah. All right. Oh, damn. Uh, so this, I got confirmation uh, that uh, it will be the, uh, the next day you're coming to school and we're going to jump right into it. So this is what it'll look like for you guys. Come back on that Tuesday, take the PSAT. I thought we were leaving school. What do you mean we're leaving yeah, what do you mean we're school? Leaving? Oh, oh, you're right. I didn't read the, I didn't read enough detail. I just read the first line and I stopped right there. That's Tuesday. Except we're coming in May 3rd. Yeah, but we're still what, May 3rd is a Saturday. No. You guys did read the whole email. Yeah, yeah Okay, so so this uh, this is the same, it's just that we'll be doing it at home. Okay, so makes why sense. Is the robot flying? I just was describing that. I said that yeah. I had to confirm uh, I was not sure because the original plan was you would not come in that other day, remember? All right, here's your homework. I'm glad today is short because I just used up a whole lot of time. If I stop collecting homework, a couple of you will stop doing your homework. Wow. So, yeah. What if you stop collecting our homework and then on so one random day, day you go, hey, can I have your homework? No, my, my math teacher in high school, my geometry math, that's what she did, Miss Shanklin. And um, how well did it work? 
Well, for people that, for, for, for quality students, which I would consider myself one, it, it didn't do anything to us. Whether she collected or not, I was gonna do my homework. But there were just too many kids where, it, I mean, it's, it's like, it's the carrot and stick you know, approach to, to, to life is that if you don't have a, a stick, all right, or a carrot, then you know, human nature is to be lazy. And so if I were to say, well, I'll just check every once in a while, then many kids, not every kid, but many kids, even in an honors class, stop doing their homework. When you get a zero and then it's it's on public display for you, your parents to see, then you get a little bit of extra effort to get it done. All right, here we go. This is a very easy day. Just takes uh, some time to get there, but trust me when I say this is a pretty simple day. Uh, so today's class is on similar solids, hey, similar solids. Zero. There is, People but well, you said, and I, what were my exact statements? I said, the you just have to be able to remember the theorem and it's, it's not that complicated. What am I supposed to do? Oh, go and skip 1211. All right, that's true. So similar solids, uh, these are solids that have the same shape, but different sizes. So it's the same thing with uh, similar shapes. You know, we did similar triangles. Now we're doing it three dimensions. The same idea here. We, we've done this sort of kind of before uh, with similar figures. Uh, we're doing it now with three dimensional objects. So uh, this whole lesson is just one example. It is the, the second to the worst crummy proof ever. Uh, they call it a proof. It's not really a proof. I call it a crummy proof. Uh, here's your crummy proof. So I'm gonna start off with um, two, two sets of, of, of shapes. So I've got cylinders, a pair of them and a pair of uh, of, uh, of uh, regular pyramids or square pyramids. Um, notice that the pyramids, it's quite easy to see that one is double the other one. Notice that the numbers there, it's a little bit harder to see that, uh, well, you can tell that the cylinders have been increased, but it's not really apparent to see how much they've been increased. Uh, you could do a ratio and figure that out. But the, the pyramids there, it's easy. All the dimensions have been doubled. All right, I'm gonna claim, this is why this is a crummy proof. I'm gonna claim that these are similar shapes. I uh, mean, it's the same shape, it's just a different size. Uh, and then we're gonna gather some data. So on both sets of shapes, we, uh, one is the larger of the two shapes and two is the smaller of the two shapes. So here's the, here's the uh, I don't know, a little uh, uh, a table that we're gonna fill out. So notice it says uh, in uh, column one, uh, it says the scale factor, it says the ratio of the, the base perimeters it says the lateral area, ratio of the lateral area, the ratio of the volumes, okay? So we're gonna see what happens when we take, this is why it's crummy proof, when we take similar shapes and we fill out this table. Do you remember how to do scale factor? How do you figure out a scale factor? You just pick two corresponding sides and it's either big to small or small to big. It doesn't matter which way you go. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, small to big, okay, small to big. Oh, I'm, I lied. I did big to small. So I'm going to do big to small. So pick two corresponding measurements and what's the ratio? And this was Anna's question. 12 over 8, which reduces to... What? Okay. And notice that would have happened if we had picked 6 over 4. It was 50-50, right? It, it wouldn't have mattered, would it? We still would have gotten three over two. It's not much of a mind read when you can guarantee it's going to be 12 eight, less. Well, not guaranteed. I didn't even know. That's definitely not going to say it's left and right instead of right and left. That is most definitely not going to Why is it not to scale? Look at the 12 and 58. It's not four. It's not six. Well, if you notice, the radius of the one is four. So let's see. If that's four, if I put it up to here, it should be, oh, it's 12. See what I did? If this is four, then if I turn it this way, that should be 12. Four plus eight is 12. But is it the exact right centimeter? If this is six, then this should be half of 12, right? Let's see. Boom, boom. So it is a scale. What Go if, figure. Look at that. What if it's not too exact? Well, nothing's going to be exact, right? Exactly. That's That's right. Right. <laughs> All right. Now let's do base perimeters. So McKinley, we're dealing with cylinders. So what is the perimeter of a base? for this shape. First off, what shape is the base? Oh, it's a circle. What's the perimeter of a circle? Six. What's the perimeter of a circle? Six. Maybe if I say it louder, you'll get it. Six times five? Something like that. What's Where? the formula for a perimeter of a circle? Six times 
By the way, we usually don't call the perimeter of a circle the perimeter of a circle. What do we usually call it? So what's the formula for circumference? Oh, C equals uh, pi r squared. No, that's area. Oh, no, two j two pi r. So what's it for the small? Uh, it's twelve. Uh, small. Eight pi. Eight, eight pi. pi. What's it for the big one? Uh, twelve pi. And if we did that, uh, and we reduce, what would we get? Oh, my word. Hmm, suspicious. Right? Suspicious. All right, Ben. Yeah. Lateral area. Well, Since we already had this conversation earlier, we better not get this wrong. Well, you <laughs> see, with lateral area. Formula? No. I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> no? Yeah. It was literally the argument we had about the silo. Or it wasn't an argument. We were all wrong. What was the formula for lateral area of the silo? Oh, it's simply the uh, pi times two pi r h. Two pi r h. So what is the lateral area of the? Yeah, that's wrong. You said height times two pi r h. Yeah, you said it so slow. I'd already forgotten that you'd said h the first time. <laughs> All right. I thought you said height times two I pi said r. H times two pi r squared. No. No, and then I said that's area, and then um, okay. So anyway, go back to uh, the, the 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 small one. So what is the lateral area of the small one using that formula? Well, uh, there is a four and eight. So we take the four, square it. Well, there's no square in the formula. It's two pi r h. All right. We take Four times the two, we get eight times eight, sixty-four pi, and then that. Yeah, okay. The smaller. All right. And how about for the big one? Uh, we have what is that? Six. Six times two is twelve. Twelve times twelve is uh, one hundred forty-four. So it's one hundred forty-four over sixteen. And I'm suspiciously not going to do any of that. I'm just going to write the numbers and see what cancels. So what cancels? Um, twelve and every what? Three. Everything cancels. Everything. Not everything cancels. No. Two, Pi R, two and pi. Two pi cancels. And then, yeah, we can see four, the 12 and that four. Four goes into 12 how many times? Three. So there's a three. So now, and then, uh, yeah, now we just have And then six. two goes into six how many times? Two goes into six. It just cancels the two and the pi. Agreed, but that four now turned into a two, and the 12 turned into a three. Because two. two goes into four twice. Well, the four already became a one. No, the How? We just oh, yeah, right. I'm sorry. It's a one. I'm sorry. One and three. Duh. Now, the two goes into six and eight. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. So that means now we have three times three to over four. So we get nine over four. We get nine over four. Now, you ready for the magic? Yeah. I'm going to write nine and four differently. Oh my gosh, I see it. What am I going to write? You're going to write three squared over two squared. Why is that? Oh my God. Because it's the same thing. It's just squared. Factor in the base perimeter. So before we even do volume, make a prediction. Right, yeah, duh. Make that, a prediction. That every lateral area is always the. So before we do this, make a prediction on the three, volume. Three, 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 because volume is. Cubed. An area squared. Yeah, so our right. prediction is it should be three cubed over two cubed. Well, let's see if it's correct. Uh, what's the volume formula for a cylinder? For a cylinder is base area times height. What? Base area True, height. but that's not a useful one. Capital B H. Uh, true, but it's just not useful. Pi R squared H. Pi R squared H, which is what she said earlier. Okay, so pi R squared H. So what are we going to get for the small one? I know, but we got to show that. That's why this is a crummy proof. I'm not, not because that, I know, but we got to prove it. No, we don't. Yes, we do. We, really have to. we have to. That's what geometry is all about. You don't accept someone's just because it looks like a pattern doesn't mean there is a pattern. You got to prove that there's a pattern. So radius for the small one is. Come on, help me out. Radius for the small one is the height is. So if I take those numbers and throw them in there, guess what happens? Uh, the pies go away. 
Uh, well, that turns into 36. That turns into 16. Turns into really big numbers. And when it cancels, you get 27 over 8, which is 3 cubed or 2 cubed. All right. So what this is about, all of the homework is about that particular pattern right there, is that as soon as you get the scale factor, you can also already know what the ratio is of any distance corresponding versus any uh, area formula as a ratio versus any volume formula uh, as a ratio. You simply take the scale factor and if you're talking about uh, a dimension, all the dimensions are going to be, in this case, three to two. All the area, well, there's only one of them, right? Now, granted, it says lateral area. We could do total area as well, too, and it would be three squared, two, two squared. Well, there's only one form, formula for volume, and that's going to be three cubed, two cubed. The same thing should happen with our pyramid. So they saved the easy one for last. Uh, Pick two corresponding sides, McKinley, and tell me their scale factor. And, and do, uh, do one to two, so big to small. Where do you see a 12? Yeah, but it's corresponding. The slant height and the base are not corresponding. Oh, so uh, 10 and 8, I think that is? 10 and, it's a 5. 5, yeah. 10, 10 and 5, so that gives me a scale factor of? And we already said it was doubled, right? So, and I picked the same one that he picked. So look at that. Two to one, I'm 100% I'm today. I, I, I read your both your minds. Okay, so without doing any of the math, Anna, what are we gonna put right here? Without doing any of the math, by the way, there's the math that proves it. Without doing any of the math, McKinley, what's gonna be the, uh, the lateral area ratio? Two squared. Okay, which would be just four over one, four. it's two squared, one squared, right? Four. So uh, let's get this right. Remember, this is the one we were reaching for earlier, the perimeter times the slant height. So let's see, perimeter of the big one would be what? 12 times four is 48. 48 times 10, 480 divided by two. Uh, once you do all that math, you get four to one, which is two squared, one squared. And lastly, without doing any math, then the volume has to be somebody two cubed over one cube. And if you do the math, there it is, okay? Tonight for homework, they don't want you to do that math. They just want you to use this concept. And the concept is what this table leads you to, which is theorem, Jack, what? Theorem what? 1211. Is it 1211? Okay. 1211 just basically says that. These three things. That if you know the scale factor, let's say the scale factor is A to B, then any two corresponding sides are going to be A to B. That includes the perimeters. It's got to be corresponding. The ratio of their areas, right, and total areas, that's lateral areas, total areas, base areas, anything to deal with area is going to be A squared, B squared. And then finally, the, the ratio of the volumes are going to be A cubed, B cubed. A cube root squared. A cube root squared is moving the square into the. So let's think this through. So a cube root squared. So for instance, the cube root of four. If we square that, that would be a cube root four times a cube root four, which would be, Jack. Is. I don't know. Four times four. Just take those two things and you multiply. Yeah, I know what squaring is. You said, what's a cube root squared? So I'm showing you what is cube root squared. So instead of replacing that four, we replace it with an X. So a cube root squared would be the cube root of X squared. Uh, when you get to, I, I think they introduce it in algebra one, if not, or algebra two, but in uh, 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 pre-calculus pre they do. Nobody writes it like this in real life, we use uh, fractions. 
So this is two over three, X to the two thirds. It makes it a whole lot easier to do. All right, we good with this? Yeah. Okay, where are we at time? Plenty of time. Uh, here we go. McKinley, you're up first. Calculate the ratio of uh, base perimeters. Lat I know I didn't. Lateral areas and volumes. So perimeters. What's going to be the ratio of their perimeters? Which reduces to pretty easy to do, right? So anything deal with area won't be three over five. It's going to be five squared. So you can either write three squared, five squared, or you could put nine over 25. Any one of those is fine. And then last one, volume. Can you do three to the thirds? Three thirds? Three, not three thirds. Three to the th third power. 27 over. These are good numbers to have memorized because you're going to see them a lot in math. Five cubed. No, five cubed is 125. 125. Those are good ones to have memorized. All right, that, that's that's the whole lesson right there, by the way. All right, uh, pick something, one through 14, it looks hard. Eight. Eight? That's, that's the oh, one that one came one. quick. That's the one with the cube root, with the cube root square. It doesn't matter because you can, I just did it on my calculator. Well, yeah, you can do it on your calculator. <laughs> Problem is, you have both cube, you have the cube roots in both the top and bottom, like gradient. Okay. No. Yes. So number eight, it says that their so it says that their volumes are three and then what is it? What's the other one? Uh, oh, three hundred seventy-five. Three seventy-five. So that's their volumes, and remember, those would have been uh, calculated by cubing something. So we got to take the cube root to get back to it. Yeah, that's um, that's you get a for that one. You just have. Right. So let's see. We take the cube root of that and the cube root of the bottom. I don't know if 375 has a cube root, yeah, right? But let's just leave it as that and, and deal with it. Um, oh, yeah, there it is. First off, wait a minute. I can reduce this fraction before I even start. Oh, my gosh, you can. Let's do that. That's a whole lot easier. Because taking the cube root of 3 is way too hard. So 3 over 375. I'm just using the law of threes. That's 10, that's 15, three goes into 15. So that's gonna give me one over 125, is that right? Is that right? Three goes into, is that 125? Yeah, right. Now we can take the cube root. What's the cube root of one? One. What's the cube root of 125? Five. There we go. So one to five. Oh, that was easy. Oh, no, everything else is pretty darn solvable. Let's go over just to make sure. So what's the base areas? Uh, one cubed or no, no, one not cubed. Trip. One what? Square. Square. So one to twenty-five. There you go. And then total area, same thing. Okay. Base area, total area. Areas, area is always going to be square over square. Volume will be cube over cube, and any corresponding side will just be the standard units. Seven is the same basic question. Yeah. Reduce the fraction. In other words, cancel the pies. I mean, and, and 81 over 144 can be reduced as well, too. All right. Is that a train, a model train? Yeah, the number 10 is a model train. Why is there a pencil on the track? Mm -hmm. Oh, there is. That's no, it's funny. because it's a model, right? Yeah, but why would the pencil be on the track? To show because the size of the model? Oh, uh, maybe. Maybe. In the military, yeah. whenever we took a picture, we always had to put an object of known distance in the picture. So you get a scale factor. So we would always, we all carried like the same kind of knife. So we'd always put the knife next to the picture we we're taking so you could, anyone could tell distances in your picture. Mr. C. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think so. Do you have medical condition? Yes. It is called needing to go to the bathroom. Yeah, so that's called may I go to the bathroom. I said may I go to the bathroom. We can 
I can't. I'm sure that was too soft to pick up on the video. But yes, you may go to the bathroom. All right, Madison. I hope that the audio came out fine for this. I didn't check it, but I do see that my, the VU meter is going up and down, so it should be okay. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, send me a chat or email. And uh, Allie is not here. We've been ditching class. That's not Looks that way.